Fleetwood Mac seems to be the theme of the moment. It is another patron vote winner, and I am not surprised Bang. because I genuinely believe that this album, Rumours, is one of the greatest albums of all time. And this song is amazing because of its simplicity. Okay. This song is so interesting to me for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's basically only two chords. You've got F major 7 and G major. It just goes back and forth between these two chords and this makes perfect sense to me because it starts with that first line, now here we go again. And this repetitive nature of the chords sets this hypnotic backbone going even into the chorus. And this is actually quite unusual. I would never think about this in writing my own songs. There is this automatic assumption for many of us that if we want a change of pace to happen within a song, a change of chord also has to happen. But yet it does not happen here. And there are still these little changes of pace throughout the song while maintaining that hypnotic backbone. What I also love is those ghostly backing vocals on the heartbeat stillness. They're really really light and breathy, no vibrato, a little slide down and it just feels ghostly and eerie and wonderful. I want to go back and listen to some of Stevie Nicks vocal nuances because there's a lot of interesting things going on there. Now there you go again, you say you want your freedom. So first of all, you can hear her accent throughout, but she's keeping it very, very smooth and that adds to that hypnotic feel. You want your freedom. She's not, you want your freedom. It's not something that's full of anger and rage. It's just, it's quite sad and melancholy. And that fluttery vibrato. Okay, so there's a couple of really interesting things in that phrase. Whistle me. She puts a little W there. And that flip is so lovely, going between that heavy sound at the bottom, but allowing that little cry break to happen. It reminds me of the cry breaks that you hear in country music. And a cry break is just another word for a yodel or making more definition between chest voice and head voice. And my mind really relates that sound to being so emotional that your voice cracks and it brings emotion into this song. Here's the ghostly back and forth. And I love her. She really goes for that full tone. Adds a little bit of twang in there to let it punch through. That's that little bit of, actually I'm a little bit peeved by this coming through there. And then the ooh, I love that. Oohs and ahs in music to me are kind of interesting because sometimes they're just put there as a kind of filler. I definitely love oohs, like in this context when it has an emotional expression on it.
interesting. I haven't heard this master of it. I'm confused. In the newer 2004 master, the lower harmony, Stevie Nicks on Thunder only happens. That's the most prominent harmony here. Thunder only is more prominent. just be because I'm used to a certain way rather than it is the better way. I think I prefer that lower harmony. That lower harmony to me is the melody and in this mix I'm like oh the harmony is louder than what I perceive as the melody. But what is also awesome about Fleetwood Mac is their harmony work is fantastic and sometimes that is kind of the point. It's all together. All the harmonies could be the melody line. Sneaky Lindsay Buckingham. There is a different chord in there and that is interesting. It's the only point, this little transition point that just lifts you up. Again, unusual because often that chord change happens in the chorus. And there in that little interlude with the lovely, very, very subtle and beautiful riff there is an A minor, a G and an F with that A minor pentatonic scale riff going over the top. Yeah. So simple and ghostly again. Now here I go again, I see crystal vision. Oh, she's such a witch. I, keep my I love it. That look from Lindsay Buckingham. Mm. So this is about a true story. It is the relationship between Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham. In fact, Lindsay Buckingham said that they had to go through this elaborate exercise of denial. They had to kind of pretend that this wasn't happening and have a working relationship because they knew that Fleetwood Mac was bigger than their own personal issues. It's also fascinating how this was written. One day, Steve Nix wasn't required in the main studio, so she took a friend of Rhodes' piano into one of the smaller studios. Now this studio belonged to Sly Stone of Sly and the Family Stone. If, if you don't know who it is, the music sounds like this. If you want me to stay, I'll be around today to be available for you to see. Stevie Nicks said it was a black and red room with a sunken pit in the middle where there was a piano and a big black velvet bed with Victorian drapes. And she sat on that bed with her piano in front of her on Sly Stone's bed and wrote dreams in 10 minutes. Wrap around your dreams I love how she's adding more rhythm here. Drums are so consistent throughout. Adds to the hypnotizing feeling. Okay, so I think it's Christine McVie on the high harmony and Stevie Nicks is still on the lower harmony here and it's just a slight different mix than the version that I'm used to, I think. Now, I really love the consistent drum beat throughout. Again, it feels really hypnotic.
Okay, an interesting thing about this drum beat, of course we're looking at John McVie playing the drums throughout this, but actually Ken Kule, the producer of the album, made an eight bar drum loop and he just cycled it over and over and over and that is why it sounds so hypnotic as well as those two chords. And that lift happens through harmony and excellent melodic writing. Now can you imagine when Stevie Nicks wrote this about Lindsay Buckingham, how that must have felt? I have so much admiration for them to be able to step back from those big emotions and channel them in a healthy way. You had to be so adults to do that. I'm gonna go back and listen to this end bit, but I love as well. Um, she's using a little bit of cry, a really strong k sound. I'm bringing the k quite far forward um, instead of k at the back of your mouth. Often that can get a little bit lost and get a little bit soft, but she's making sure that it's a really tight percussive beat. <laughs> Amazing. It's simple in a way that's almost scary. As a songwriter myself, I would find it really nerve-wracking to make something that simple as if I wasn't giving the music enough. But in this case, it is so genius. It draws you in, it hypnotizes you, and it helps you listen to exactly what the song is about. Maybe there's space for a little bit more simplicity in my own writing and this song has really inspired me with that. Before you go, as I have said, I have just released my very own album, Fable. It's not as simple as this for sure, but it has definitely its own vibe and lots and lots of harmonies. So I'd love if you could check it out. There's a few songs available here on YouTube and on Spotify, and I'm really proud of it. All right, if you enjoyed, please do like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.